All right, so we'll be working on this Hammerhead 150 GY6 powered go-kart. Been a little preoccupied lately. Getting ready for a two post car lift. But I was trying to get the uh, reverse to work on this and I ended up breaking the cable. It's got the reverse gearbox right there and the cable's broke. So we've got a new one. I'm gonna try to get that installed. We're gonna do a couple repairs on this GY6 go-kart today. We're gonna be fixing the reverse cable. We have a new one sitting there that runs up to here. I'm gonna get this little cup off the old cable, put it onto the new cable. So down here at the reverse box, I got some channel locks or vice grips on here. We should be able to get this snap ring right here set back and then pull this out and then set it back on that next notch back that you can kind of see right there. And that should let us hold it out so we can get this cable off. So that snap ring is sitting back. Just pull that cable out. Grab our new cable. And we gotta get that cup on the end. I did so throw some grease in all these just to help the cable last. I'm gonna grab that cup and put it on real quick. All right, so with that out a little bit, see if I can do this with one hand here. Just drop that in right there, and then we'll pop that snap ring back in place. So the snap ring is back down in there now. And we'll get the cup pushed back over. And we'll get the cable routed up to the front here. So we're gonna fish it down through where the rest of the cables run and get it up to the green lever up there. So now that the cable is routed, comes up front, it's just laying right here. It's gonna go in back there with the spring on the front of here, but keep it in frame. And that's all gonna go through that and onto that ball spot there. So we're gonna unbolt this so that we can get the handle off and then put that assembly back in. So for me, that was just two 13 millimeters on this bolt here and that nut that was on the back side. That went in this way. So we just gotta fish this through Get that into the ball slot right there, focus, and then assemble it back on. So we're gonna slide that through, get that pulled up. Catch that into the ball slot. We'll line that back up and put it together. All right, so actually the uh, back side of this flange is uh, um, threaded and then the nut is your jam nut for it. So how I'm adjusting this that I like is I'm gonna put it at peak slide there, get a good amount of tension, not overly crimped. And so I like it about right there where I'm almost fully compressing that spring and then it slides in. So I know I got a nice firm detent on that and now I'll put the jam, on, jam nut on the back. We got the lever back installed on the cable and then so now we got a bunch of slack in all these. So with all these jam nuts in or the uh, cable adjusters and this cable adjuster in. We're gonna come to the back and we're gonna adjust that pretty far out because it's gonna be our course kind of course adjustment right there. And then we'll get a fine adjustment with the cable ends. All right, so for mine, this cup is actually slotted inside so it can't spin when it's fully seated. So that you have to pull this out to be able to adjust this. This is gonna be our course adjustment. So I've got about eight or 10 threads going into there. That's kind of where everything seems to be firm enough at mine. I'm gonna tighten this jam nut right here, check if we're getting reverse engagement, and if needed, adjust these two on the cables. So we've got that adjusted. Go up front, check our slack. We got a decent amount of slack up front. So we've got the spring in there. And that pulls in before we start to get it. And then we finally get our engagement right there. Did I, that spring's in there. I almost feel like I need a, a washer or something to offset that because we get all that engagement right there before we start to pull. And that's all just on that spring. So I might have a bad spring is why. Mine partially didn't work last time besides it's seizing up and breaking. I don't feel like I'm getting enough enough throw on that. So I don't know, maybe we'll adjust some spring tension into it and go from there.
So this thing's got a current draw on it. So we threw the chunky uh, battery pack on there. Won't start a car, but it seems to work okay for this. So going through some random bolts and washers I had. I didn't have any good IDOD washers. So uh, I grabbed a nut. We'll see how that works. But inside of it wasn't the right size. So I grabbed my little drill bit checker here. Put it in the holes. Found that a 1564 would, would have been it. So I um, didn't have that, but it has 6 mil. So pretty close. So we drilled that out. Now we're going to throw it on there in the stack. Put it back to the back here and see if that takes out a little bit of our spring slot. So we put that on there. Take this whole assembly and put it back to the back. And now, uh, ooh, actually, that isn't right. Because that needs to be able to slide over top of that to make the spring work. So I gotta drill that bigger. So now I gotta find the OD of this piece here to drill out that nut and make that work. So I'm gonna double check what I got and see uh, if I have something that'll make this happen because I didn't, didn't think of it that way when I was doing it the first time. Doing the same thing as before. Use my drill chart. Ended up being uh, 5 16 which is 7.94 millimeters. Got an eight mil drill bit and we'll drill this out. So we got that drilled out. We'll throw it back on there. So we'll check that it fits. If I can do this one handed. And it does decently tight, so hopefully that doesn't work as a jam nut and cock while it's in there and hold it in place. That is a worry. So we get the spring on. I guess this could go. This could also go behind the spring, and then I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna do that. Put that on behind the spring, and then put the spring on, and put all that back to the back and we'll get reattached, see how it works. All right, so we're starting out from pretty much the same configuration we had last time, except I've now got this side bottomed out. So we'll check how this pulls through. So still a lot of spring right there. But now we're getting a lot more cable movement. So let's uh, fire it up and test it. All right, so we're gonna fire it back up. Try to make sure we don't have too much forward tension. And uh, we'll go forward. So forward is working. Put it in reverse. I felt it click back here when I did that time. That is firm reverse. Let me try it with my full body weight in it. Because that was the problem. 
problem last time. Oh yeah. So we go back in the board. Yep, buddy. sound uh, let me know but the jack is absolutely overkill since I can just pick it up and set it on something but uh get this zipped off here all right we'll get that on the uh, mini tire changer and break that bead so we got the mini tire changer and uh, we're doing it on the welding table because the workbench I had this mounted to is uh, currently out of commission so I'm just gonna clamp this down until I make a fixture for it and get the tire on there that's actually the original reason why I bought this thing all right so we got it mounted up on here and I'm pretty sure that's how I broke this uh I don't know if I said that in the video or not but this actually ripped out of the cast aluminum base so I welded some stuff to the bottom of it and kind of stuffed it back through there but I'm trying to break this thing and it's a it's a slow progress as I work around it and Slowly try to get it broke down, so I'm going to keep on working on that. All right, so we got the bead broke. We got it cleaned out in there. There was nothing really too bad in there. A um, couple pieces like grass and stuff stuck in the rim, but just like the gap there from, I don't know, riding it or whatever. Because these run relatively low pressure. I think these are running like maybe 10 pounds. I don't know what Carlisle says they're good for. Four PSI? Yeah. Well, maybe I wasn't running them right. That's awfully low. So, got some bead sealer, get it dabbed up around the rim here, get some air back in it, see if she holds. So we're only doing the one side because this is the only side that was leaking. Get that bead sealer back on there. Now will put about 15 pounds on her. All right, there it is. 
we'll get some soap on there and see if it's leaking. Who would have thought the uh, hub of the tire changer was the exact same size as the inside of the rim. So a piece of uh, uh, rubber that was under there finally ripped and now it falls. So it really doesn't work for this. <clears throat> I just need to get a slightly bigger plate to put on top of here if I'm ever going to keep doing these rims. So, yay. But we'll get some soap on there. Let's see if it wants to leak. Come back in a couple minutes, see if anything bubbles up. So. No bubbles so far. Those are on the outer part, not the inner part. So get this, and I have lowered the uh, pressure back down. So get these back on here. Trying to do this one handed is surprisingly more difficult than expected. a little bit of torque kind of he's probably like what 30 just come on over here with 30 and i kind of need an extension and stop the thing from moving charging with the headlight issues that I don't have a battery so battery it's finally called it quits enough that uh, they won't give it enough juice to keep the headlights on so I might try to find a way to keep this with me and go for a little spin let's hop in here let's see if I can get this seat to move back there we go first time we'll have reverse
that's good. See if that tire dies down. That one does need a valve stem, but it's a slow leak. I don't feel like doing it right away. So we did a fair amount of ride on this thing last night and uh, used reverse a bunch. Everything worked well. This tire that was completely flat still holding air, so it looks looking good. Ready to go rip.